Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to use the color guide in Illustrator. And um, I have the file that uh, I have on the 3D Game Labs page under the Color Theory Quest um, opened up. Um, you have access to this if you, if you do that quest. Um, and so you'll see I have a monochromatic um, blank version, a complementary, split complementary, analogous, and triad, which are the five color schemes that I talked about in that quest. So the first thing I would suggest doing is make sure you have a color guide tab open, a color tab open, and your swatches tab. So if those are located still over, and, they're, and they are by default located on the right here, uh, you want to click it open and then grab the tab and pull it over so that you have access to it. What I'm going to do is show you how to use the color guide, which is really powerful in um, Illustrator to kind of set up different variations on your color palette. Um, we're going to start off by picking a color and then figuring out what color scheme we want to use and then we can save our colors into our palette uh, for that particular file or design that you're working on so you can refer back to those colors later on at, at, a, at a different time. So here I have the, the PlayStation logo and its original colors that you would expect to see in the, the PlayStation logo. So the first thing that I'm going to do is attempt to make a monochromatic version of this logo. And if you remember from the quest on uh, color um, variations that you did, monochromatic means it's different variations on one color or hue. So what I did is I went in and I set up red, just primary red as my initial color to start this off. And if you look at the PlayStation uh, logo, you can see here that the, the P is red and then you have different um, colors appearing in, in the in the logo that we're going to actually try to change um, with different tints and shades of red. So the true definition of monochromatic is using one color and then doing different variations through tints and shades. So basically what I'm going to do is I have the color already set up. So you can see here is my red color. Now under color guide you'll want to hit this drop down menu here which is your options for color guide and click on color guide options. In this little menu, it's going to give you uh, two choices here. One is how many different steps uh, to the right and to the left of your two primary colors that you have set up here. So we have red and green, um, just our basic full saturated hues that we're going to be using here. And um, I have three steps or three squares on either side of that. So that's the least amount of steps that you can put in this to get different variations. You can increase this by hitting... Um, this up arrow and you'll see you're going to get more boxes on the right and the left. So the number represents how many boxes both on the right and the left you're going to get. Now variation, if I reduce that down to less, it's going to be how much of a percentage or variation of the value of that color it's going to show me in that particular color guide. So if I go to 50%, I'm going to have a 50% variation from the regular amount of saturation of that color um, to shades to the shade side and then to the tint side. So it's going to get lighter as it goes to the right and it's going to get darker as it goes to the left. So with that in mind, I can basically build my monochromatic system from there. But I'm going to take it a step further. In the, the great part about what Color Guide does is if you hit the, hit the drop down menu, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on that. If you hit the drop down menu, you have several presets and you can see that all the different color schemes that we talked about and more than the five that we talked about are listed here. So we have, for example, complementary, we have analogous, we have triad, we have monochromatic, um, and that type of thing. So what complementary to is, is just Illustrator's way of giving you more of a variation on that complement. What, what I would suggest doing is just sticking with the regular one, not the numbered ones. So in, in our case, we're gonna start with monochromatic. So instead of picking monochromatic two, I'm going to pick regular monochromatic and I'm going to get different tints and shades of that primary red that I picked. So you have to make sure you pick your, your color first and then choose what color scheme you want before you start saving your different colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this primary red down into my swatches palette so it's saved. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick uh, a lighter version of that or a couple of lighter tints of that color. So I'm going to pick this pink. And this is just a matter of you just using your instinct on, on how you want to do that. And I'm going to pick an even lighter version of that pink. So here I've got a couple of tints of, of the, sh the color red and then I have the regular hue of red. And then I'm going to pick 
a couple shades as well and just drag them into my Okay, so I have uh, several tints and shades of that, that particular color that I can use there. And so I'm going to go over now and start applying those different colors. So I'll start off with the, the primary red on the P, just like it is in the actual logo. And uh, with my fill selected, I'm going to hit the color red that I pre-selected. So it's going to fill it in with the, the first color there. Now you'll notice on the PlayStation logo, the hue uh, of this, this blue here is actually a dark shade, darker shade of blue. So I'm going to also make this a darker shade of red because it, it looks darker in the logo. So I'm going to select this first one and I'm going to choose one of the shades that I pre-selected. And I'm also going to do it to this corner one too. And then moving down the line here, this is kind of a neutral blue here and then a brighter version of that um, uh, part of the logo overall. If you were to see this in a black and white version of it, it would make it uh, a whole lot easier to kind of interpret which parts you should make brighter and darker. So this middle one here, I'm just going to pick my middle color, probably this one's a good one, and select it first and then just click on the parts that I want to make it that color. And then I'm going to finish it up by selecting this bottom part where the lighter tint of that red color. So I'm going to choose this one here and this one. So that's pretty much it. We have a monochromatic PlayStation logo that follows the different levels of value that were pulled from the original PlayStation logo. Over on the complementary side of things, I'm going to, I can go in, you can do this too if you want to, you can pick a different color to start with. Um, say you just want to go um, a nice natural blue. There we go. We'll start off with that blue color there. And you can see it's giving me different tints and shades of that blue overall because I'm still set to monochromatic as my choice in my color scheme. But now I want to switch over to complementary. So now that I have my blue color selected, I can go down to complementary and find that. And it will show me the complement to blue. So this would be the color on the opposite side of the color wheel, which happens to be this orange color. And it's also providing me with the different tints and shades of those two middle colors there. So from here I can do like I did with the, the red part and I can grab my two major colors and drag it down to my swatches to save it and then start pulling some tints over of both of those colors and a couple shades over of those same two colors. And so I have a whole bunch of colors in my color scheme that I can work with for a complement. So I'm going to use my neutral color blue for the letter P here. And then I'm going to just use the same kind of concept where it's going to be a, a, sh a couple shades, a neutral tone in the middle, and then a lighter tint version of either of those two colors. So si since this is yellow, I'm thinking right away that orange, I probably put the orange in that. So this is just a matter of you experimenting and using a little bit of instinct to do that. So I'm going to apply a couple of those lighter versions of that orange there. And then on this inside one, maybe I want to go with a little bit brighter version. I don't know. I'll probably just stick with that. If you find that you don't have enough colors to choose from, again, go back to your options, choose color guide options, and increase the amount of steps. And you should get um, more colors to choose from. And also you can increase the amount of variation between those two colors. So you can see I have brighter versions of that. And then you can just drag and drop down to your, your uh, swatches palette here. So that middle one, I'm going to use a lighter version of that orange, or I could just use the orange entirely if I wanted to. So if I start back with that orange color, I can go in and pick a lighter version of that orange and pull it down so it has a little bit more color to it and just start applying those colors. And then the last thing I'm going to do is apply a dark shade of that blue. And so here I have two colors. So your complements are opposite each other on the color wheel. So we have orange and the different variations on orange, the tints and shades, and a, a few variations on that color blue. And so what you end up with is a nice harmonious color scheme of colors that look really well together. So experiment with the color guide. It's a wonderful tool in Illustrator to use. It's powerful, uh, but it takes a little practice to get to know how to use it. And good luck.